Hello, so um, I thought today we could talk about how are things going on in your country? Are people observing social distancing? Are they ignoring it? Are people wearing masks outside? You know, are they not wearing masks? I might not be on the full hour tonight uh, just because I've not had any proper dinner yet today. So I'm quite hungry. So I've had some food earlier, but, you know, I might have a bit of food in 40 minutes time or something. All right, Newt, you're right. Or Knut, however your name's pronounced. Um, but yeah, when I went to the supermarket earlier to stock up on stuff, I had a mask on. Quite a few other people had masks on, actually. Some of them were hardware masks, which is obviously good, proper protective masks. Some people had surgical masks, not so good. Other people with scarves again and things like that tied around their face. So, um, but there is a degree of people wearing masks now, so you don't get weird looks wearing one, so that's good. Seems people are learning in that regard. Some places are doing the things of where, you know, they draw markers on the floor, and it's meant to be, if somebody stood at this one, you stand this further back. Although the problem is that doesn't really work in reality in a supermarket, because if you need to go and get something from a certain shelf or browse a certain shelf, um, you know, that can't really be implemented. But I suppose it cuts down on it, and that's a good thing. So um, today, Ramirez, I just wore my, um, what's it called? The um, Alpha Mesh? It, it's like that P2.5 one that's um, like a half face FFP 2.5 mask. I just wore that because it's quite lightweight and comfortable. So um, I would have worn my GVS Ellipse, but I really don't know where it's gone because I was looking for it to show it in the stream the other day. Thank you, Altrix. All right, thank you very much. Hope you can watch it later on, I guess, if there's anything interesting in it. Also, I've got the Martini Henry now, but unfortunately, I'm not allowed by YouTube's rules to show that on the stream, which is one of those really annoying things because it's, it's lovely. Uh, there's a video coming up on it tomorrow. You're allowed to show it in regular YouTube videos, not streams. I don't understand the logic, but there we go. Yeah, I've heard that, unfortunately, Mike. Yeah, that's a good idea, Gretchen, if they're doing it from even further distances. Like, it's good some places are doing it. But, yeah, Mike, that's um, yeah annoying. Luckily, we didn't see too many people, although the roads are getting busier out there again, which isn't a good sign. You know, because if it was people doing essential work, delivering supplies, you wouldn't mind. However, a lot of those people, I think, were just wanting to go out for a day out, which isn't what you're meant to be doing right now. So we basically went to the parcel force depot to pick up my parcel, drove back so we could put it in the house safely because you we didn't want a Martini Henry kept in the car. And then, you know, out to the supermarket to buy essentials and straight home and we've been in all day. Yeah, they certainly are, Carlos. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, but here's the problem, Arnold. If somebody, let's say, is doing a mass shooting and they're live streaming it, are they going to care about getting strike further down the road and they'll probably be dead or in prison for life? Again, it's it's one of those stupid things, isn't it? it it's not going to change anything, but again, I have to abide by the rules because I follow the rules. It's for donators, Gazzy. If you donate, you can get invited, but. Right, people should always, I mean, it depends on what your country is implementing, Twitchy, but here they are literally telling everybody to stay inside unless they are going out for medical reasons, as in to go to the pharmacy or to basically go to a doctor's or hospital appointment. So you should only be going out for medical reasons, only going out to buy food. And I think the point is that when you go to buy food and that, you should be buying a decent amount. So you shouldn't buy, you know, a day's worth and then go out every day for food. You should buy a week's to a month's worth of food at once. Um... And then um, the only other reason to be going out is to be doing like a daily bit of exercise, but you should do that in a remote place. So the point is, in the UK at least, you should not be going out unless you're going out for those reasons, like the government says. And if you are going out, I would w recommend wearing a mask. America's recommending wearing masks now at least, which is a good sign, because as, as I said, we all know they work, but lots of countries or, you know, health authorities for ages were pretending they magically only worked if doctors bought them. It's a real one, Joe. Weirdly, a replica one would have more laws applied to it than a real Martini Henry. Um, because in the UK, we have a thing called antique or obsolete uh, calibre guns. And those are ones that you can own without any licences. As long as you don't do anything stupid with it, there's no problem. Because of how our laws work. You'll, you'll find info about that in the video tomorrow. But... 
Um, well, gas masks are just the same thing as wearing a face mask, just to a more protective degree, Toasty. I'd recommend it if people can put up with it all day, but, you know, for however long they're out. But I personally find for what I want to be doing quite quickly, going out and coming back in, half face masks are perfect just because they're more comfortable. You know, I can wear my glasses with them so I can see signs at a distance. Um, Beagle, masks are not done on your height. They are done on the size of your face. Use a GP5 measuring guide. Google it. Google GP5 gas mask measuring guide and then compare S10 sizes to GP5 sizes. Yep, Trump is being very strange, isn't he, Vanessa, where he's going. Like, are they recommending people wear masks? I'm not going to wear one. I can't meet dictators with a mask on. You know, I think he should be setting an example. But in all honesty, I was one of those people who didn't mind Trump at all prior to all this. I quite liked how much Trump upset people. But he is really annoying me with a lot of this corona stuff where he keeps trying to, you know, belittle experts who obviously know a lot more about him, about um, viruses, you know, and diseases and that. And again, apparently he cut a lot of funding to the US pandemic response sort of teams or completely cut them. And then, oh dear, that's not worked out very well, is it? <laughs> Gretchen said Trump can lick some doorknobs. <laughs> you said that, I didn't. Um, rubbing alcohol is a good thing, Jenny, but there's hydrogen peroxide. There's a lot of chemicals you can use. I would just recommend looking up a list of recommended chemicals because, again, some doctors and all that disagree on what works and what doesn't. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for some parcels, Druid H. I found Royal Mail internally in the UK isn't that bad, but I found stuff coming from abroad. Um, even if it gets from various countries at a decent speed, it seems to get stuck at the moment in sort of shipping centres for quite a while. Yes, you can, your nan. Obviously, make sure it's a mask. It's OK to use silicon lubricant on. But yeah, you can use silicon, silicon lubricant on quite a lot of rubbers, metals and plastics and woods. So after I polished my Martini Henry, and that's not a euphemism, I then used a load of silicon lubricant on it to polish the rust out of the metal that was on the surface. And then for uh, like half an hour earlier, I was using, um, you know, a cleaning rod with flanets or whatever they call them with gun oil on to actually get all the rust out of the barrel. It looks lovely, but sadly I can't, I'm not allowed because of YouTube's stupid policies to just wave it about on the stream. Um, it depends, Jake. It depends. If it's cardboard type stuff, no, just because most guidelines seem to suggest stuff can't live on cardboard very long. If it's like, you know, like plastic kind of bag type material, then yes. Thank you, Tenny Army Barbie. He says, only ones I could get on eBay, free gas mask filters, 40mm filter replacement gas mask filter, NBC. Let me Google that and see if I can work out what ones they are. Because again, that's just buzzwords really, isn't it? It's not an actual name of a brand. I think I found the one. Oh, yeah. Th these look all right. Two of them look like Scott Pro filters, but another one isn't. One of them, Chimera, that's Finnish. But, yeah, they look absolutely fine, those ones. Very good, yeah. They are decent filters if they're the ones I've just found. But, yeah, why they've used all the buzzwords, not the real names of the filters, who knows. But Well, I don't know, because I think it says, Tesco, you're not allowed to handle it on the stream, but I don't want to push it, because if I get a strike for it, I might not be able to upload videos for, like, a couple of months or something. Yeah, I, I know about that, Sam. That's one of the reasons I've got it, so if ever I want to do that, I can do it. But, yeah, it's around the same power as a 4570, isn't it? Um, the Martini Henry's 577. I mean, if you have the both the black powder variants of them, I know, obviously modern more powerful um you know like smokeless powder 4570s obviously generate a lot more pressure cheers dorian i've already had two pints today earlier on when i had my lunch so um i thought it's a bit early in the day but i might as well but yeah i won't have any more today and thank you angela and thank you tenny army Bobby again yeah, it should be okay. However, Tenny Army Barbie, if you're using nose filters with the um, GP5, they should fit anyway because the Scott ones are apparently 40 millimeter thin.
That's interesting. I was looking at the foot pounds, Sam, on various sites that gave foot pounds. I suppose it depends on the load and everything, doesn't it? And the size of the thing. But regardless, it's a very nice cartridge. I do know like the history of it and it is a lovely thing, but I just wish I could show it on the stream, but suddenly I can't. So yeah, most of today, once I got back in, has been just, you know, polishing it off, getting the wood looking nice, getting all the surface rust off, cleaning the barrel out. Because although it was one of those um, very good condition um, antiques, it was one that, you know, obviously hadn't been sort of oiled and cleaned properly. But so that's all done. How many crossbows do I own, Damien? The full size crossbows. One, two, three, four. I think six full size crossbows in various draw weights and everything, different prods, and a few pistol crossbows as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into doing that, Sam. I've ordered a new um, band for it, you know, like sling, because the sling that came with it, because it's so old, it's that white one there. It's like, you know, falling apart to touch it. So I've taken that off and I'll put a nice, like, sort of modern leather one on. But, you know, very simple looking, so it fits the rifle. Eltrick said, here's some beer and Geiger counter money. Can you make an unlisted video on the Henry? It doesn't need to be unlisted. It, there'll be a video on it tomorrow. It's just you can't show them in streams. So as of tomorrow at 12 UK time Eltrix, it'll be quite early on in the States. There'll be a video on the Martini Henry talking about both a bit of history of the gun and everything and showing it and some of our strange UK gun laws. No, Dallas Med, they don't. Only if you're uh, intending to shoot them because we've got a weird thing of our law. Um, again, going very off topic of the stream again now. But if it's considered an antique firearm in the UK... It only has to be registered, as far as I'm aware, if you're going to shoot it. So it's one of those things you can own it, and that's fine. But if you intend to shoot it, you need to register it, and then you can unregister it after you're done shooting it, as far as I understand the rules. Um, so hopefully those laws don't change, because they're quite good, actually, and like a lot of our very restrictive laws. Um, right, Altrix, I didn't show putting a round in in the video just because I don't know how dodgy that would be of the UK laws. However, what I will demonstrate in a later video, I've ordered a dummy like plastic round for it so you can test the breech um, eject mechanism. So basically when that comes, I'll do that because in no way could that plastic bullet be considered a live round. But the problem is I'm, I'm worried even if I showed doing it with an inert round in a video. Somebody might say I'm loading real rounds into it, you know, because you know how some people are online. So I, I just want to be really careful of that because you don't want, firstly, I don't want to get in the shit myself with the law about it. And what you certainly don't want is the laws to get worse for everybody else because they use you as a test case and then the media drags you through the mud and says this is a reason why all this stuff needs to be banned. Um, a DP5 V kit, probably 100 to 200 dollars. I'm not sure with Canadian dollars. But in the UK, it's just about to get a full DP5 kit, normally V, at least that is. The early models are actually more expensive. Um, the full kit's normally 100 to 150 pounds, depending if they come with a briefcase or not and condition of them. What would what would I do on that sister channel though, Newt? But or Knut. But um problem is that that means I wouldn't upload so much to my main channel. Um, all right, Ragley, unfortunately, apparently a lot of people have been going out and just lazing around in public spaces like they've been told not to do for the sake of containing the spread of it. But thankfully, I've been in all day other than going out to do some essential shopping. All right, Mike. Yeah, exactly. Lorgar, that's how it works, isn't it? The idea is that you slow down the rate that you have your curve. So hospitals and all the medical staff aren't overwhelmed. Anyway, what was I going to show? I, oh, I was going to show something about Geiger counters. Well, it's actually an ionisation chamber. The CDV715, a UK seller, had arrived today. Unfortunately, it's not working. But I haven't played about with it enough yet to diagnose it. So let's have a look. As you can see, iron chamber's a bit rusty. I could take the iron chamber off and try replacing it. But I don't know if... Oh, or the lighting changer. That's that battery contacts are a bit rusty. So it, I'm I'm hoping it might just be the battery contacts are rusted and nothing else. Um, none of the capacitors look damaged. The step up circuit still looks really good in there actually. But yeah, the iron chamber looks quite rusty. So I'll take that off. 
Um, I've got a spare. I've got two spare iron chambers for one of these. And I could try, of course, manually connecting a battery to it and then seeing, um, you know. But the nice thing of this, at least, is the actual front panel of the screen is in really good condition. So, again, worst case scenario, I salvage this for the parts and I can get a really good working CDV 715. But, again, I'm hoping it's just... Um, with this one, a case of um, maybe the battery contacts need replacing. If it's that simple, it will be a really easy fix. I mean, slightly worst case scenario, the iron chamber needs changing and the battery contacts need fixing. Worst case scenario is lots of the electronics inside are fucked, but hopefully not. But worst case scenario, I can just salvage it for some parts or maybe use it as a prop for something. But, you know, the main, main annoying thing of getting US CDV equipment in the UK it's just if you buy it from the US, even if it's only like $30 for one of these in working condition, the postage and the tax on it ends up making it over $100 and you have to wait like three weeks to get it. Um, but yeah, I'll have a play about with that at some point when I've got a bit more time. But again, it, at least it didn't cost me much. It was like £15 plus a bit of postage, so like 20 odd quid. So I don't mind spending that on them, even if I'm just cannibalizing them for parts. A bit extreme, non-important creature, but people should take it really seriously. So I can understand why they're doing it. Because, again, if you're not serious with the people doing it, you know. Druid H said, what is your opinion is the best non-Soviet Warsaw Pact comic as most? As in non-Soviet, but including Warsaw Pact nations, or not including Soviet or Warsaw Pact masks? Oh, outsource variants of Soviet masks like Shin variants don't count. Um, Probably the Czech CM4 out of all the ones I can think of off the top of my head, if you mean Warsaw Pact masks that weren't Soviet designs. I'll have to look that up, Brantrex. But at the moment, I don't need a new watch, in all honesty. I'm still very happy with this one. Oh, so is that a um, sort of aircraft-type one? I've got a World War II German watch. Um, that obviously doesn't keep time very well, due to the age. And I have got a Junkers um like branded watch, which is quite nice, but that's just a quartz movement. Yeah, thank you. Don't forget to like the stream. It does help. You don't need to find an electronics YouTuber to do it. There's plenty of people I know in re uh, real life who are good with electronics who could fix it. But again, the problem is if you buy something and loads and loads of the parts are fucked, there's no point actually you know, replacing 99% of the parts where, you know, you can use a couple of the bits from it. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fucked up if there's people being shot literally on their balconies or in their gardens, because they're not violating quarantine if they're doing that. I'd rather not go into it, Harvey Rob, in these streams, but if, if you think 5G causes coronavirus, I think you might need to take some pills and, you know, go see a head shrink. But I, I don't want to go into it too much. But the problem is, if somebody, like like I said in every stream, I'll just sum it up quickly and then we won't talk about 5G again on this stream. If you think 5G might have bad health effects, in no way could I say you are wrong. Um, you know, I can't say you're right or you're wrong. I don't think there's enough research done on it, but it's People have been saying that at every single form of mobile mast tower going back to like the 90s. Um, however, if you think 5G can cause an infectious disease, which you can then spread to other, other people, no, it can't. You know, bacteria and viruses are not caused by different radio frequencies. Best Polish mask, Spooky. Um, out of Polish masks of practicality, well, the MP6 would definitely be the best, but I don't have one to review it. But um, Yeah, I think, though, Speku, my one has just a valve on the side close to the filter intake side, because it's for, like, anti-fogging. Yep, do you remember 3G and 4G, 4G shrimp zoo? I don't even have a 5G capable device, so there you go, I'm alright. 
Uh, it was a Warsaw Pact one, so it would not survive. Uh, not so. It would not surprise me if it was based on a Shum like forty one or basically Shum series mask. So yes, it, it's probably based on a Soviet mask because it's a Warsaw Pact sign. Yep, they certainly did because they use gas in warfare, non important. Uh, they did some very very fucked up things. Um, again, we're going a bit off topic with the string for that, but yeah, they did domestically design quite a few masks. Again, I would like to try and keep this on topic, though, because, um, you know, going back to the question I said at the beginning, in your area, no matter what country you're in, how is social distancing going? Are people following it? Are they not following it? Do you have rules on it? Do you not have rules on it? Are people wearing masks? That's the sort of thing I mainly want to ask in this stream and get answers for. I've got that on DVD sing, but yeah, in that the government makes a virus, don't they? Where's that Kur uh, Kurama Uzumaki? What, where's that? But yeah, that's not a good thing. Oh, that's annoying, Charla. It, it, in some areas in the UK it's alright, in others it isn't, but unfortunately it seems people a few days ago were following it more, and now they're sort of saying, oh, I can't be bothered anymore. I found a sort of weird, different thing, David, where I am. Stores, they're actually enforcing it quite well, as in, you know, a certain amount of customers have to go out before another customer can come in. And they've got lines on the floor saying, you know, you shouldn't, when you're queuing for the tills or queuing to get in, it's meant to be you stand at this line and then the next person stood, you know, like two metres on the next line. So that's quite a good idea. But the problem is, again, in some realities when you're in a store, there's, there's nothing when multiple people are trying to get things from the thing. At least when I was in the stores today, everything was in stock. Some items are being rationed, as in you can only buy two per person shopping or whatever. You know, or different numbers. But there wasn't really much out of stock. There was a couple of things out of stock, but not so much that I'd think anything of it, of it you know, any other time of the year. I just think they hadn't had a shipment in for that sort of product. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, Cake and Meister bars should be closed at the moment. That's what they've done in the UK. Um, I know it's not an easy decision to make if you think about the financial harm it could do. But the problem is, you know, bars, clubs, pubs, all those sort of things aren't very good places for not spreading viruses. Yep, I saw that in two shops I had to go in today, Pete. Uh, Parcel Force didn't have that in their office, but Pets at Home had it. Um, and they also had sanitizer at the door they were encouraging people to use, which was good. So, you know, when you went in, you sanitized your hands, and then you could sanitize your hands on the way out again, um, which is a good idea. And in Audi, they had all those things that, you know, made it look a bit like bank booths. But it's a good thing, because it's at least protecting the staff to some degree. Although the problem is, if it's airborne, it's not really going to protect them to a big extent. But it reduces risk, and that's always a good thing. Um, it depends, PC guy. If you're in a household, most countries aren't enforcing it. Because if you're in a household, unless you know somebody's infected and you think the other people aren't, there's no point because you're all going to get it anyway. The point of social distancing is not going out to meet other people, basically. Um, it's so households can't spread it to other households, if that makes sense. What, what country is that in non-important creature, uh, creature? But yeah, I think they have to get tough on it in some places because the problem is as much as you might try and nicely encourage people to do the right thing for a while, sadly, I think a lot of people are just going to say rules shouldn't apply to me and won't do it. Uh, Jinx sold gut, if I'm pronouncing your names right, thank you very much. He's a cheers from US, learned a ton from you and used your knowledge to protect my family. Was clueless about Mars since he started watching you three months ago. All right, thank you very much. If you're in the US, you might be very, with the Gazdan flag, you might be very interested to know I have now a functioning rifle. It's a Martini Henry, because in UK law, um, a Martini Henry is considered an obsolete or antique gun, so they are no longer classed as firearms. So I spent quite a bit and got one. I'm absolutely in love with it so far. Sadly, I can't show it on the stream, though, because it's um, YouTube's policy, but there is a video coming out on it tomorrow. 
and I can understand why you Americans love gum so much. You know, when you're handling a real one, cleaning it and all that, it, it is a lovely feeling. But um, Nathan said, a guy in Ferrari being pulled over and booked for day uh, tripping to North Wales today. Good. I'm sure if he's got a Ferrari, he can afford the fine. Paul said, in my local supermarket today, people were uh, wearing masks and then and those who weren't People are starting to take it seriously. Oh, more people wearing masks than those that weren't. That's good. Yeah, when I went to Audi today to do some shopping with my dad, um, not everybody had a mask on, but you're seeing more and more people with masks on and more people with proper masks. You know, when I went to Sainsbury's a couple of weeks ago and I documented that on a video, about well, not like video, but I took loads of photos of empty shelves. Um, I had a mask on. One or two other people had masks on. I only saw one or two other people actually have N95 style masks. You know, I saw a couple of people with surgical masks and some people just doing this, which obviously isn't going to protect you very much. And then some other idiots going, oh, look at the idiots with masks on, aren't they stupid? Oh, don't need a mask. Um, but yeah, today there was a lot more people with masks on and pleasantly a lot of people actually with proper, you know, like grinding masks, sanding masks, you know, N95 or better type masks, I'd say. No guest masks I saw today, but, you know, a lot of people with you know, like 3M or equivalent industrial brand masks, you know, for, with like sanding, grinding sort of particulate filters. Uh, Bushcraft's master said, what filters are meant to come with a cover on the filter? Because I've seen brand new filters were sealed in the packet, but no cover on the filter, thank you. It's not, it's not a standardized thing. It's not like you have to do it or don't have to do it as a brand. In theory, the better, you know, cover the filter is the better, but if it's a particulate filter, it really doesn't need it other than it being, you know, in a bag or a, bit of wrapping when it comes um vapor filters should come plugged but not all brands do it but again the more plugs and like foil wrapping or whatever on the filter the better preserved it is why is that shrimp zoo just because they're saying oh we didn't buy enough for the doctors and so we're blaming normal people for owning them right vanessa i hope that goes well at least the cm3 is an all right mask I see interesting Pete. So he says on buses, the benches near the driver are disabled. The buses do not accept cash, but either a mobile ticket or a bus card. Yeah, so you're not handing stuff over that has germs on it and you can't sit too close to the driver. That's a good idea. There was a bus driver phoning in LBC the other day saying he's had a couple of mates die from coronavirus now in London. You know, he works for Transport for London. Um, and, you know, they're not really taking it seriously enough there with... You know, like he was pleading with people saying, look, there are drivers dying. You know, there'll be other people getting on the buses dying. Only use the bus if you really have to do essential work. Don't use the bus because you can't be bothered to walk five minutes down the road. You know, I, I found that really weird when there wasn't a virus around. But it's even stranger now. If there's perfectly fit and healthy people that would rather pay a bus fare, especially if they're waiting at the bus stop to get a bus to get off five minutes down the road and just walking, you know, and they get there before the bus even turns up at that stop. You know. I suppose you can't, you know, common sense is not all that common, as Mark Twain said. Yeah, 700 odd deaths in the UK today. Quite a shame, and we're not at the peak yet. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, Wow Sharrow, because if you do that, you're probably not going to get as much just good airflow through your house anyway. You know, and if you've got anything that produces radon in the house, radon's going to build up and be harmful. Um... I think I think there's only some a certain degree you should go to in trying to protect yourself from the virus unless you're in a very vulnerable group, because I think some people might go a bit too far and, you know, almost do more harm than good, taking all these sort of measures to protect themselves. I think for most people, it's just following the basic rules, you know, giving other people distance, being sensible, but, you know, not going too over the top. You're a postman then, JT, but yeah, that's a shame. Our postman's doing a good thing. What he does is he almost does a knock and run, you know. He goes to your door, he puts the parcel on the doorstep, rings the bell and walks off. Perfect. But yeah, um, I have noticed a lot of people like approaching, you know, delivery drivers or whatever, or approaching people doing different jobs, you know, getting in their space, which you really shouldn't be doing at the moment. What country are you in, that guy or that G, G-H-I? 
Your mum says, in my area, North Yorkshire, people are going out with family, taking kids to the park and still having days out. Yeah, that's a shame. But again, the thing is, if you're doing something where you're not going to come into contact with other people as a family unit, it's not really a problem because you're not quarantining in your house, as in a sense, between the family members. But yeah, when people are just going out into, you know, making the parks really busy rather than it just being people running or cycling through them. Pete said, in Finland, you see ma, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, uh, I butchered the pronunciation of that, I'm sure, which includes several municipalities, is completely isolated from the rest of Finland. Uh, I suppose if it, if it works, it works. Uh, so you're in the USA, there's a curfew there. There's not a curfew in the UK yet, but you can be asked why you're out and about, but we're not taking it anywhere near as seriously as some other countries. We have to fill out a form before you go out. And if a cop or somebody checks on your form when you're out, you know, ask for your papers and uh, you're not where you said you were going to be on the papers, you're in trouble. I'm sure it's already doing that old Indian scout, but if people don't isolate, people die the other way. It's catch 22, isn't it? I think personally it will do less harm. The big danger is if you go too far with some of the isolation measures and then you cause so much damage to the economy, it lowers the quality of life for everybody later on. Again, I, I can't answer those questions, but it is an interesting debate. Um, but I've been seeing that on LBC, you know, where they, they discuss that, where people are saying the problem is if the quality of life, you know, through poverty essentially coming about because of shutdowns for too long, that could in fact mean more people die at a younger age because of, you know, less access to good health care, you know, less access to good food and nutrition, bad mental health sort of problems, you know. Non-important creature said, here in Malaysia, police patrols actually caned, flogged, slapped some kids that are chilling outside. So made them do push-ups. Some police ended up being sacked. Well, here's the thing. There's a degree of what you should enforce, and there's also a degree of taking it too far, isn't there? I think it has to be proportionate. Part of the problem the UK police have come under recently, you know, the criticism, is where different police forces were either really strictly enforcing laws, you know, to the degree they were power-tripping, some cops just could not give a shit and others, you know, were being a bit, mm, we might do something, we might not. And it they need to be consistent because it's no good if somebody goes out somewhere, risks infecting a lot of people and just basically nothing happens. Or in some places, you know, if somebody's just out taking the exercise they're allowed and you have a job's worth cop, you know, pretending he's Judge Dredd, you know, it's, it's that sort of... Um, but Trump won't wear a mask himself, will he, Dorian Katz? Because he can't meet dictators with a mask on, he said. <laughs> Nobody knows, Brown Stark, it will be different from country to country, state to state, all that sort of thing. Um, a lot of it is going to be based, the more people obey the rules and don't go out unnecessarily and slow the rate of infection, the faster it will be over. But sadly, in the UK, we're already getting people going, oh, I'm bored of it now a week or two. Two in a week, two weeks in now? I think we're two weeks in, aren't we? Would it be... Monday coming, this Monday coming, we'd be two weeks in. I think so, wouldn't it? But yeah, a lot of people sadly seem to be taking the attitude, we're two weeks in, so I can't be bothered to follow the rules anymore, which is just going to drag it on longer and longer as well as cost lives. Yep, unlike Trump, Scott, he, he wore the mask. <laughs> so there you go. Gazi says, notice me, hello. Uh, not that I've seen Oliver TL, there's not enough PPE here, sadly, at all, especially for healthcare workers, which is really scandalous, but... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I thought, Gretchen, that, you know, saying prime ministers, presidents, dictators, kings and queens, whatever he said. Well, it's glad to know that, like, you know, a queen or um, an elected, you know, an actually properly elected leader is the same degree as, you know, like a banana republic dictator or whatever. That's good, Pete, at least. At least they've had some forward planning. The problem is, I think, in a lot of countries, we pretended nothing would happen. They sat on their hands, the people in charge of planning it, and then, of course, it got bad. 
Well, if you go out to a shop while Shadow to do your essential shopping and buy an Easter egg, surely that should be all right. But yeah, I'd agree that going to a shop just to buy an Easter egg is not a good reason to be outside. But if you're in a supermarket anyway, you know, I don't think there should be any problem with buying an Easter egg. Oh, that's good, Trevor. Well, not good if the, the virus takes you out, but good that you had your M10 on, you know, it made you feel confident or whatever. Henry says, when I wear face masks out in Vancouver, Canada, I'm still getting looks from most of the people who don't wear face masks. Yeah, I think they're in the stupid uh, minority, though, at least now, at least in the UK, from what I've seen, more and more people are wearing masks and taking social distancing seriously, as, as much as some people are violating it. You know, at least some people are going the extra mile, you know, which will counteract the stupidity of some people, at least. Thank you very much, Michael Franco. He said, we had a crime spike here in Cali since the lockdown. Here, my car stole a couple of days ago and a few shootings, way more robberies. That's a shame. Hope you're doing all right. Um, but yeah, I said the other day that, you know, there could be a rise in crime. And then people were saying I was a tinfoil hat retard because people are going to get on bet with each other. Sadly, I think, you know, people will use this as an excuse if they know there's going to be less police around in some places to commit crimes. It's just human nature, isn't it? And that's not even counting the people who get desperate because they're running out of food or money or whatever else. I do a few, Ivan, but not as many as I used to, just because the rules aren't as friendly on it, on both YouTube and in the UK as they used to be. Did you tell the person, Oliver, that they were a cunt for saying that? I would have done. I did see some video of some person calling other people cunts for wearing masks, when, you know, those people are less likely to catch and therefore spread it, aren't they? Whereas this person who thinks like he's a self-important prick, you know. Martin Pret said, Sirius Light came on my dash in my car two days ago and I have something to do, been tracing the problem for days now. Annoyingly, I've got one of the lights on my car dashboard and the reason for that is when my car was serviced recently, the mechanic obviously forgot to reset the service for another year, so now it's thinking you're overdue a service and it's come up with the warning light. I'm still waiting for the fault reader that should have been delivered days ago. If it's not here in a few days, I guess I'll have to contact the seller. But I bought one of those fault readers so I can just reset it myself. Because the car has been serviced. It's just they forgot to turn the service, you know, reset the internal computer thing. That's the annoying thing of cars are computers in, of course, compared to old cars. is There's way more annoying shit that's kind of like designed so garages are the only ones that can do it. Did you say, Oliver, that they were a waste of oxygen? I know you probably didn't, but, you know. Or a waste of sperm, you know. Their mum should have swallowed. They're all good. They're all good things you could have said to them, but, you know. Um, Karama said, order an ODB device to reset. I think that's pretty much what I've got coming. Let me just Google what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty much what I've got. It's just one, you know, where it's like the plug, the cable coming, and then like the console bit attached to it. I had one for my old VW I used to use, but obviously it's not the same connector and software for running on a Renault um, or a Dacia. But, you know, if, if I, even if I was to take the car, because the thing is the garage would do it for free for me because it's their problem. But the issue is the garage where it's done is like a 20 odd mile drive. So the amount of, pe I know petrol's cheaper at the moment, but still, you know, the petrol cost to do it is actually more expensive than just having that tool and being able to use the tool anytime I want to. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping the one I'm getting this time gives a bit of a better fault reader code, because the, the VW one I had was one of ones of, you know, like tiny text, even though the monitor was quite good. But yeah, they are good devices. Um, Well, not new inert rounds, Peach, but I have... I'll, I won't say too much about that. Ask me on Twitter. But do I... Um, I probably can't show them on stream either because of YouTube's rules because I'll be showing ammunition. But you'll see one in the video tomorrow. Let's just put it that way. Uh, they're not very good masks, unfortunately, cheat. Most of them, the plastic, like the rubber has dried out enough that it's turned into plastic and won't make a very good face seal. All right, I'll look into that one, Flotatious, if the one I get doesn't end up being good enough. Because it's one of those things I think is a handy thing to have anyway, just so, 
even if it's not something you are going to fix yourself, I quite like the idea that I can see what the error code is, so I kind of know ahead of time, if you were paying a mechanic to look at it, what your kind of, you know, price range is going to be, because that way it's harder to get ripped off if you know, you know, so they can't take the piss. Um, MOF4 filters, assuming the particulate layer still works, will last pretty much forever, same as any particle filter. Vapors and particle filters are different things. Yeah, I've I've seen those, Karama, but I didn't want one of those because I, I wanted one that was just sort more something I could keep in the car glove box. As much as the phone ones look a bit more practical, I thought, fuck it, I just want one with a console bit attached to it, you know, like a wire and a couple of things. Yeah, Oliver, because supply demand, <laughs> there's not enough masks to go around. All right, Rusty, as I said, if I don't get on with the one I've got, I'll get a really good high-end Bluetooth one, but, you know. Thank you very much, Dylan. He said, hey, man, thanks for all the info on gas masks. You're a huge help. Yeah, thank you very much for your donation. I've got some old M50 masks and filters from 1978. Do you know what filters they are? If the filters are from 1978, are they actually the older Israeli filters? The ones that are like the Zivil Shut slash HVAC or HMAC filters, whatever they're called. If so, I wouldn't really recommend using those filters. But if they're actually slightly later filters and they're Israeli Type 80 filters, they're fine to use. I answered you, Thomas Patriot. The answer is pretty much forever, as long as it doesn't clog up. I'm not going to answer you again. Yeah, and those people are idiots, Gazzy. At least on LBC now, when you get those people phone in, they basically just tell them they're an idiot and hang up on them. You know, they'll, they'll still debate people on some things, but if you just phone in going, oh, it's just the flu, they will actually, not, not me doing it, but, you know, because I wouldn't do that, but the people who do it, they don't even try and debate them anymore. They just basically say, you're an idiot, you know. Well done, you're an idiot. They hang up on them because, like, you know, we don't we don't need to tell you hundreds of times why it's not like the flu, and some people still go, oh, it's just the flu, though. Beer was completely stocked there, Tenny Army Barbie, today, actually. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything out of stock in regards to beer. There was a bit of canned food in some places that were out of stock. The toilet rolls were there, beer was there. I bought a four-pack of Abbott Ale, a four-pack of a type of Pilsner, can't remember the brand of it now, some bottles of cider, and a bottle of Irish cream. So I, most of the money I spent at the supermarket was actually uh, alcohol today. But, you know. I definitely feel like I'm drinking a bit too much sat at home, not doing much, but, you know. I think it's even worse than eight times, isn't it, Bennett? But the, the, the point is, like, how infectious it is and mortality rate at a minimum, yeah, it's far worse than the flu. And the strain it puts on healthcare systems is far, far worse than the flu. Um, I'm normally like Ian Payne on the weekends, Traff. Um, who's Tom Swarbrick's on in the evenings, isn't he, most... Uh, days of the week and i like tom swarbrick stuff because he's one where he'll you know just go right thank you thank you you're being an idiot you know i don't know it was a weird james o'brien thing wasn't there about vegan sausage rolls or something <laughs> i don't know anyway we're not going to talk too much about lbc at the moment because that's that's just despite the point of what we're you know talking about Um, if you get a well-made reproduction one or an original one in good condition, your nan, yes. Um, they're, they're very good knives, but they're not utility knives. They're knives designed for killing people. Um, so if you were saying, yeah, again, it's not a conversation I really want to get into on YouTube, you know, publicly being recorded. What do you want the knife for? If you wanted a knife like a general bushcraft knife, a Fairbairn Sykes would be useless for you. If you wanted a knife to quickly, you know, that's, that's what they're designed to do, and they do it very efficiently, you know. It, it's literally a combat dagger. Yeah, I mean, I feel sorry for the kids, Gretchen. You know, like, if, if the kid's been born into a family that doesn't vaccinate them and the kid gets fucking polio, I do feel really bad for the kid because of the stupidity of the parents. But, yeah, I, I think as much... I think some of this stuff is turning me a lot more into an authoritarian status from a libertarian, in all honesty. You know, where you just see the stupidity of some people and you realise, you know, maybe something should be done about those people.
Um, depends what you want for an air rifle. Air rifles in the UK are limited to 12 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, legally, which means, um, you know, again, you can get crossbows in the UK and bows, you know. But again, I don't want to get into this sort of conversation at the moment. Thank you, Bushcraft Master. That's cool, Tenny Army Barbie. But, yeah. I've not been to Belgium, but I've been to Ukraine. I've got some Belgian beers here. Uh, I don't think YouTube policy minds me holding these up. These are really good, um, but obviously quite strong. If I've had a different beer, I'd never have one of these. These are, like, you know, enough for an entire evening for me. Um, the left ones, you can get blondes, brunes, or whatever. Um, rubies, I think, is another one. But, yeah, 4.9 UK units. So this is like having basically five shots of whiskey, you know, five shots of vodka. Um Obviously, it's a bigger bottle, but the point is, for, you know, a single bottle of beer, that's quite strong. I'm sure you probably can, Tony. You can probably get some Belgian beers, can't you, in, like, specialised places? Because I've had some really nice Belgian beers before, but the problem I... You know, I find with some of them is it's just it's too expensive per bottle. You know, it's one of those things if somebody's gone somewhere and they're cheap and they buy a load, you know, that's nice because they're a reasonable price per, uh, per bottle. But the problem is some of the places like, you know, sites that specialize in stocking really good ales and beers, you know, they want 10 to 15 pounds a bottle. And that's like getting into the price of like buying a bottle of wine sort of price, you know, decent ish wine. So for that price, I'd rather buy a bottle of wine. Where's that, Thomas Patriot? You might have already said sorry where you are, but, but that, that sounds like good beer. When I was in Poland, I think I had a 65 to like 7.5% beer. But I know there's some Czech beers as well, aren't there, that are quite strong like that. But in the UK, there isn't really a standard beer percentage. There's a lot of beers that are like 4% odd, 5% odd, but, you know, there are some types of beer um, or ales, you know, or ciders that are much stronger in terms of percentage. It depends really what you want to drink. Let me look up Duval, JT, because um, it's one of those ones I'm sure I've had it before. But I, I don't know, but the tipple might be one that... Um, next time I'm in Tesco's, if they've got any there, I might get some, actually. I've actually, weirdly, not found it is Shrimp Zoo. I think it's... Um, I've, I mean, I've got ulcerative colitis, not Crohn's, but, or Crohn's, but... It's one of those things I've found where it seems to be very, um, you know, hit and miss. Like they give you a list of foods that might affect you and some of them don't affect me at all. And then there's foods not on that list that can really flare mine up. Uh, there's different types of hobgoblin, Jamie. But yeah, that's done at Witchwood Brewery, which isn't far from me at all, actually. So that's at Whitney Witchwood. I won't say exactly where I am, but like, that's not too far from where I am. Um Cheers, Dylan. He said, would you recommend buying the Myra P3 filters for COVID-19? Right now, it's 150 for six of them. By the way, the Israeli filters, I have a green, I have green tape on the plug and a stamp 78 on the top. You probably have HMAC or HVAC filters. They should be safe, but they're not as good as the Type 80 filters. Right. Regarding Myra, the issue is of Myra is they're basically a company that doesn't make their own stuff. They just put their labels on other people's products they buy and then sell them for more money. Um... Myra filters are generally, I think, Czech Avec brand filters, just sold at a premium. Myra masks are generally other Czechoslovakian masks sold at a premium. So I know a lot of people on here really don't like Myra. Um, you know, the more I learn about them, the more I don't like them. But the problem is with Myra, unless it gets to the point where everything inflates the prices Myra want, bear in mind you're basically just paying loads of money to a company that rebrands things. But if you can't find any other P3 filters for um, like 20 to $30 or less each, you might have to go with that. Um, the problem is because I'm not in the States, it's very hard for me to look up what filters are available. Let me just see if, um, what's, oh, what was that? Sportsman Guide. Because at one point, Sportsman Guide, I don't know if they've still got them in, had um, lots and lots of filters for decent prices. So let me check Sportsman Guide for you.
Right, does Sportsman Guide have any of those 40mm filters in? Because at one point they were doing filters like $5 each, were actually better than those Myra ones. Um, but it's whether or not they've got them in still, or if they've sold out. Because again, the problem is at the moment that, you know, everything's selling out, as you might expect. Um, no, sadly, the only mask-related filters they've got left in are GP5s, Italian M90s with the filters, and French after masks. Um, so, yeah, I can't help you there. Let me just check eBay.com and see if anything comes up. Bear with me a moment. I'll go back to the chat in a minute. I'm just seeing if I can find anything. Um, Uh, there's some, annoyingly, that are in the UK where I am, but whether or not they ship to America at decent prices, I don't know. But you want something that's actually in the US, don't you? That's the issue. Um, and that's where I struggle to set the criteria, because it keeps trying to say, oh, you're in the UK. Um, let me check some others. Sadly, I'm not actually seeing much at the moment. I suppose if you have to pay that for the Myra ones, you have to pay that for the Myra ones. But, you know, they're, they're going to be just very overpriced what they are. And but annoyingly, because there's so much price gouging on um, stuff at the moment, you know. But yeah, sadly, I can't find much for you. I was having a look. but So apologies about that. So I suppose if you have to go for those Myra ones, you have to go for those Myra ones, Dylan. But, you know, like I said, it, it's not really a company I'd recommend buying from because all they literally do is buy other products, put their own brand sticker on them and resell them. Um, Thomas says, "What the question is, what's the difference between 40X4 and 40X17? 40X 14 slash 7 is technically 40 millimeter NATO, as in 40 millimeter NATO Stanag. 40X 4, I believe, is Gost, but the problem is that's not always labeled correctly on some of the filters. But... Uh, so, yeah, one Rocky MTN rider says Myra ones are back ordered anyway. Um... I'm just going to try putting a couple of keywords in on eBay just to see if, um, you know, I'm going to type in things like Belgian filter, French filters, you know, just in case any pop up. Um, this one apparently has free international shipping. Oh, I was saying that. No, they're the old asbestos ones, and I will not recommend these filters to you. Um, right. Can you check if these ship from the States, uh, from the UK to the States? Because if these do, I'll put a thing in for you, Dylan. Um, if this person will ship them for a reasonable price, the masks come with filters anyway. So you get spare masks and those filters are actually modern Belgian ones in the picture. So they are P3 plus a bit of NBC stuff that's probably expired. Um, but if not, I'll, I'll show you the Scott ones if there's somebody who does international shipping. Actually, um, I've just 
Uh, this is a Lithuanian one, but this was the one the guy recommended earlier in the chat, Dylan. So let me recommend this one as well, actually. Oh, the link's too long. Bloody hell. Hang on. Let me see if I can get this link shortened. Um, or I'll find a similar one. Hang on. Um, let me go on one and see if it says worldwide shipping. And if it does, I'll put you a link to it. Post to UK. Post to UK. Post to UK. I'm just trying to find one that will post to the state, so hopefully for not too much. That post to worldwide, but the filter's overpriced. Post to UK. It's getting a bit frustrating now. Post to UK. <laughs> Goes to worldwide, but there's exclusions. But the filters are nineteen pounds each, so they're cheaper than the Myra ones, and they're combination filters. Right there, you go, Dylan. Check this one out. See if that's any good for you. But yeah, there's there's a few. Uh, I'd say look for maybe European sellers that still aren't charging an arm and a leg, and then just work out if you buy enough in bulk if the postage works out. I know it'll still take a while to come if Myra's back ordered anyway, and they're overpriced what they are. Right, it's strange that there's somebody walking his fish, Alex, but I'm I'm glad most of Romania is being sensible. Right, I'll be off in a couple of minutes, so I'll just see if there's any good questions to wrap up with that can help people. Yeah, I've had a similar problem, Devil Knob. I was looking in my area, could I donate some masks and filters? And sadly, a lot of it is that's not stuff we technically use, so we can't use it, even though sometimes it's more protective than the equipment they do use. All right, cool. I'll be on then, Mike. I'm going to grab a bit of food before then, but obviously if I go off now, I have about half an hour to grab some food. Yes, what you need to do, Flotatious, is generally try and look up things like RD40 filters, because the problem is if you're typing in something like NATO filter or whatever, NBC filter, if it's technically a military filter, it's never going to be sold to civilians unless it's stolen property. Um, unless it's surplus, so therefore out of date. So to find in-date filters, you need to find like hardware stores that, you know, literally restock um, filters that way. So for example, as much as I do actually have some, um, you know, in-date military filters from certain contacts, um, you know, you want to look for stuff like this, like this Spassiani, where it's, you know, RD40 filters. I think this one's out of date because it was just one that came with a mask, but you know, the point is that you can sometimes get, see, this, this filter's from 2014, but the point is, you know, you can buy filters like this still in date because they're ones made for commercial businesses or people to buy, you know, not ones that are, um, yeah, I'd say go for that then, Dylan, because the, the, at least the masks pictured with that are the Belgian 40 millimeter filters from like the 90s and the 2000s. Like, you know, the ones that meet pretty much all standard NATO requirements. They're a bit like a USC 2A1 filter. It's just a different case on it. But again, you know, P3 at the front, activated charcoal with a whole mix of different things in it to neutralize various gases behind. And even though the charcoal bit might have expired, you know, the particle bit is still going to work. So... If that works out cheaper than getting the Myra filters, you're getting some spare masks with those filters, you know. You could, in theory, JT, even make your own. If you got some, you know, polyurethane, whatever they call it, um, you know, like mastic stuff, you could, in theory, mastic your own layer. Um, but the ones that come in the MP5s are just like glued in polyurethane. Vanessa, activated charcoal is used to neutralize certain chemicals or chemical weapons. How it works is it's porous charcoal 
so gases stick to the charcoal rather than traveling through the filter then into your lungs uh sadly not connor uh they're not geiger counters that one is the rate meter but those the mark ii radiacs are actually ionization chambers they take radiation the problem is um no they do take d-cells but they also take an obsolete type of nine volt battery and an obsolete 30 volt battery so you won't be able to power them unless you find some incredibly easy way of doing it that nobody's thought of. If you want one of those, um, but that still works, you'll have to look for the MD3, is what they're called. The MD3 is where they retrofitted a load of them to keep them in service for longer. They put new electronics in them, and they run off a single D-cell. So if you want to find one of those that works, you'll need to get a MD3, not a Mark II. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, lots of like 1950s Geiger counters and things, not all of them, but lots of them, 1950s and 60s Geiger counters did not use regular batteries you still find, you know, today. They're all weird, obsolete, very high voltage batteries that, you know, you just won't find anymore. So unless you want to tape loads and loads and loads of button cells together, get the voltage just about right and make them fit all the contacts inside, you're not going to power them, you know, or gets several variable voltage transformers, crop clip them all up without the crop clips knocking into each other, run them all at the you know correct voltage, but the point is you won't have one to easily walk around with. Yeah, if if you're on about corner the MD3, you can run it off a single D cell. It takes two D cells, the bottom bit for the filament, that is the D cell that powers the entire unit except the light. So, you know, that will detect radiation once you have that D-cell in and it's turned on. Um, the top D-cell is the light. Uh, so all that does is it runs a light bulb. So you don't need a D-cell in that one. But if you have two full D-cells in each and your light's working, one of the positions lets you have it on with light. So, you know, the backlight comes on. But, yeah, you just need a single D-cell for the md freeze. But anyway, I'm going to be off now. Um, thank you, everybody. It's been a good stream. Hope you're all doing all right. I'll probably be on tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday. I might do a stream at a slightly different time tomorrow, but I don't know when. But I think I'm having quite a lazy day tomorrow because I had a load of chores and had to do a load of shopping today. So, you know, tomorrow, why we're going to be stuck under quarantine for ages and might have a day of, you know, just doing nothing, which might be quite nice. So, yeah, thank you, everybody, and see you. Um, and, Thomas, to answer you just as I go off, the CM4 needs 40x4 GOST, not 40x1 forward slash 7. It's 40 millis of GOST, not NATO. So 40x4 without any other bits on the things.